Hi and welcome back to Power Mods. I'm Louis Skibo. Today we're going to talk about scratchers. Now I have two different types here. We're going to install these today. And you're going to see how these work. Now, now there are a couple of differences between these two scratchers. If you install this on a snowmobile that has reverse, if you forget them down, it's quite possible that you're going to bend them. You know what? That's exactly what we did here. I put this in reverse, bent these things back, so you know, that's not really working. I'm the kind of guy that forgets a lot of things. I'll forget these down again, so I'm going to install these Duraflex ice scratchers today. You might ask why we're putting scratchers on a sled, and there's a couple different reasons, but the main reason is for slider life. If you get on a, some hard packed trail, maybe you have to do a little bit of road riding to get to a trail that you're heading to, you're going to start to wear down your sliders if you have no lubrication on there. So it'll grind into the ice, pull that up, spray it on top of your sliders inside your track, and it's going to help you out. It might add a little bit of additional cooling up into your cooler, but I'll be honest with you, it won't add a whole lot. Now there's an old hole here for a set of idlers. I'm just going to widen that out and I'm going to put this in there. The instruction manual says to have it two to three inches up, but because of the length of our paddle, we want to make sure that we don't go too high or the scratchers won't come in contact with the ice. Got to think of these things. Each of these scratchers have a little uh, sticker on them indicating what side they go on. This is for the right side. Make sure you put the lock washer on the inside. Slide that through. There we go. Now you want to set this up so that this is actually pointing 90 degrees down. You don't want it up on an angle like that. It's not going to come in contact. You don't want it too far forward. That's not going to work either. So you want it pointing straight up and down. Perpendicular to the ground, we'd say. Just like everything else you do to your snowmobile, make sure you come back and check these often. You want to make sure that it hasn't hit something, it hasn't rotated up. Make sure that this hasn't come off, maybe this hasn't loosened up. Because if something like that happens, maybe that gets caught on the side of your track. You know, you could run into issues there. It might wear your track down, make the bars show, and then, you know, we don't want that happening. So just like everything else, come through, check all the bolts, make sure everything's tightened up. And that way you won't ruin your nice day of sledding. Now as per the instructions, torque this up to about 40 pounds, 40 foot pounds. It's not like me to usually follow the instructions, but for this, I'm definitely going to. There we go, that's 40. Now one thing you gotta make sure, you gotta make sure that this doesn't come in contact with any moving parts. The spring guide here, when the spring rolls through it, is still gonna miss this. Make sure you don't put it anywhere near here, where this comes down, any suspension flex parts. You don't want them to come in contact with this because you're going to run into real problems there. You know what, while I'm here, I'm just going to check all these suspension bolts, torques, make sure they're all tight. This one was loose. These things take a lot of abuse when they're on the trail, so you got to make sure everything's nice and snug. There we go. There, now we'll do the other side. All right, let's go outside and try this out. Now we've got the old land up here on the hoist. I ran into some problems last year. I started to melt these high faxes because I was driving on the trail. It was hard pack and I could feel the sled starting to bind up. I just wasn't getting the cooling. These lugs, I'm telling you, they, they're great in the powder, but on a hard pack trail, you just don't get the cooling of the snow on the sliders. Since I don't have reverse on the old monster land here, I'm going to put these universal fit scratchers on. And you know what? I got lucky. I bought this suspension on backcountryrebels.com and it looked like somebody already had scratchers in here, the same type. The bolt fits. Right there. So I'll just tighten that up. I'll do the other side. Well there we go, the old 540 is going to love me for that. You know, these are really important to have on your sled. Make sure you put them on, save your high facts, don't ruin your day.
You know, you never know what kind of conditions you're going to be riding in. Yesterday it was minus 25 here. It was super cold. We did some road riding. We needed our scratchers. Today, after we've installed these, we go out on the trails. It's plus two. It's very mild out. Don't even need my toque on today. Even though the rear suspension is packed full of snow, it's super heavy in there, it's still not getting on the sliders. It's just stuck in there. You'll notice that those scratchers just throw the snow right up on there, and that's what you want to have happen. Works fine in reverse. Now, when you want to buy these, make sure you give firstplaceparts.com a call. Tell them Louie from Power Mods sent you. Don't forget they ship free in the United States, and they ship USPS to Canada. Thanks for watching Power Mods. Stay tuned for more videos. Even though it's a mild day, still got to get some riding in on the old XLT here.